I hope you're doing so well today. Well, I've got an exciting Bible story for you today. In fact, I wonder if you have ever wondered what it must be like to be eaten by a fish. Hmm. So that's what's coming our way today. But just to backtrack a bit, remember we've been asking the question of how many gods are there? And we've been learning there is only one true God. Well, in the next little while, we're going to be asking a new question through our Bible story. So, George, can you help us with that? What are we going to be asking over the next little while? So I'm going to be telling you guys the new big question that we are going to be asking for the next three weeks. Why should we obey God? We should obey God because He made us, He loves us, and His plans are good. Wow, George, that's a really, really good question to be asking, hey? And so, in our Bible story today, we're going to be learning just that, why it is so important to obey God. So, let's head over to our Bible story. Hello everyone, this is Jonah, and he is the prophet of Nineveh. He will be telling all of us about the journey that God sent him on. So, Jonah, first question. Where did God send you and what did you have to do? God told me to go to Nineveh and to tell all the people there that they were doing wrong things and that they should be nicer to one another. Because they were mean. Because they were mean, yes. exactly. But apparently, Jonah, you didn't go. Why is that? I was afraid. So I got into a boat and traveled far, far away. And then God, out of nowhere, sent a storm to warn the sailors and to tell them about my journey. And they asked me who I was and where I came from. And what did you tell them, Jonah? I told them that I did not, that I was Jonah. And that you, you were, you worshiped God the, of all yeah. creation, right? I told them that God was king of all, king of everything in the universe. What did the sailors do when they heard you say that? They threw me into the sea. Into the sea. Into the sea. Imagine. They they threw you into the sea. Mm. And at that same moment, didn't they worship God because of your yeah. story? After that, literally once I was thrown into the sea, the storm stopped. No way. That is And then from that moment they have worshipped God. That is so cool. What did God do after he stopped the storm? Didn't he send a fish? He's, yeah, I got swallowed by a fish. For how many? For three days and three nights. That is... That is, that is so amazing. cool. What did, what did you do when you finally got to the city of Nineveh? Once I, once I got spat out by the fish, I went to Nineveh to tell all the people there that if they don't change their ways, God will destroy the city. 40 days and from that moment on all of them changed they were nice to each other that is amazing because god is a loving and graceful, graceful god. god exactly last question what was the lesson that god taught you on your journey god taught me well the first thing i knew that i was angry at god i was i was afraid i didn't know what to do but i soon realized if I had been a faithful and working servant to our God, everything would have worked His way. But yes, it did. and it did. And it did. So even though Jonah did not do what God sent him to do, God had a son named Jesus Christ. And Jesus always obeyed God. And Jesus died on the cross for our sins to make us loved by Him. Amen. Goodness gracious, that's quite a hectic story. I mean, I'm not so sure I'd like to be have, you know, sitting in the inside of a fish for a while. You know, fish are usually smelly, but can you imagine being on the inside of one? Oh, not so good. Sure, that's a good plan. But you know, what did strike me very much in this story is that Jonah was pretty moany, hey? Moany, groany, Joni, Jonah. And um, it seemed to me like he was only happy when things went his way. So I will only be happy if I go this way. I will only be happy if you do this, God. I will only be happy if you do it this way. In other words, 
he was only happy when it went his way. But you see, what the problem was is that Jonah missed the whole point of why God wanted him to go to Nineveh. You see, Nineveh, they were in a mess. In fact, many towns and cities were in a massive mess. They needed God. They were sinning. They had forgotten God. Their lives were shambles. And God specifically wanted Jonah to go and tell them that they needed to stop their sin. They needed to get their lives together and put God back into it. And if Jonah had listened right in the beginning, all those people's lives would have been better for God. And Jonah would have been happy because he would have seen God's plan come to fruition. And I think that's the important thing we need to remember. God does love us. And so he has a plan for our lives. And he does, he's made us, so he knows what we're good at and what we can do. So boys and girls, sometimes we love our life and we don't know what's going on and we're a little bit uncertain. But you know what? We need to remember to ask God for help and then to follow through what he's asked us to do. And that peace and happiness will fill our hearts, even if it's something difficult to do, like Jonah had to go to a place he didn't want to go to. So that's really the important story we're going to learn from the story of Jonah today, hey? It wasn't good to live in a fish, but the reason he had to go in the first place was to tell people. And guess what? He wouldn't have had to live in a fish in the first place if you had followed God right from the beginning. So that's just a side note. Well guys, what a cool Bible story, hey? So we're going to be talking about a few more prophets over the next few weeks and the messages that they told to the people. But now you guys all know that we're busy with our truth challenge and we are done with the book of Mark. Some awesome things happened in that story and we, we saw how Jesus died on the cross and he rose again. That was a good book to read. And so today we are going to tell you what the book you are going to read for March is. Are you ready? Drum roll! And it is Mark, Ephesians! Oh, I almost said Mark again. It's Ephesians. Now, I have a quick question. Could somebody please let me know who wrote the book of Ephesians? So, I'd like to know how many chapters there are and who wrote it and what interesting things are going to happen in the book of Ephesians. And so, before I sign off for today and let you go and read the book of Ephesians, I'd like to just let you know that Mimosa is going to be teaching us a new memory verse for today. And that is our memory verse for the month of March. And that's exciting. Thank you, Mimosa. And then we're going to stop it on to Colleen. And she's going to just share with us why she loves to read her Bible. And again, to remind us why it is so important to read our Bible. So we'll do Mimosa and then on to Colleen. So guys, have a great week. Please join us next week as we learn about a new prophet. And we continue in our Truth Challenge series. So guys, have a great Sunday. See you all next week. Bye! First. Peter chapter 3 verse 9 The Lord is patient with you. He wants everyone to come to repentance. I love to read my Bible because it's something that helps me to know how to do life. And my Bible is called the Open Bible, which I think it's called that because it wants you to open it every day. But this Bible was given to me by Uncle Dave in 1981, so it's 40 years ago, so it's very special to me. It's got lots of notes in it when I remind myself what God has said to me over the years. I've also asked God to give me a special psalm for each of my grandchildren and on their birthdays I pray that psalm over them. So yes, my Bible is very important to me and it really tells me how to live, how to think about life, it helps me know how to pray, so it's very, it's like my best friend.